Oh man, I don't even know where to begin with this one. So, this is the review of Fallout 4. Oh, you can tell that all of the effort uh, from Bethesda's stream went into this one. There is so much to go through. There's a new crafting system. There is so much. So let's just start by watching like, I don't know, about five minutes of footage. And then I'll have to add the different footage for the different things we're going to talk about because, wow. They have added so much. So let's actually look at some footage to start off with. <sighs> this is an enormous dynamic world where you can create any kind of character you want, go where you want, and do whatever you want. Player freedom remains our absolute number one goal. This is running on a next generation version of our creation engine, features full physical based rendering as well as dynamic volumetric lighting. is dynamic. It is not a mode you're locked into. You can play it in first person, you can play it in third person, you can walk away whenever you want, you can shoot him in the face if you want. You're all by yourself. You want to come with me, pal? Okay, then. Let's stick together. Hey. Head over there. And yes, you can give the dog commands by simply pointing at things in the environment and activating them. It's all contextual. Grab that. It is from here that you'll explore the most ambitious and detailed game world that we have ever made, culminating in the massive ruins of downtown Boston.
and this is only a small percentage of the game. We haven't even got into the crafting system, the base building system, or the upgrade system. So I'm going to play a bit of that footage and let him explain that for a minute, and then we'll get into the full analysis. And it works like this. You can scrap items in the world for materials and then use those materials to build the way you want. And one of the great things about having a fully dynamic game engine is all of this just works in real time. Rip it apart and build the way you want. Like the rest of the game, this is about making it your own experience. We want you to build and decorate and, and make yourself really um, a place you want to live in. A new home uh, for yourself and your best friend, of course. <laughs> As your settlement grows, people will arrive, including certain traders. They have some of the best items in the game. Uh, for these people, you will need to, you can plant food, water, and even uh, power generators. Alright, so the generators will power things through switches that require power. Lights and other items. And then you run wires that connect them all, and it, again, it, it just works. You can also build your own terminals that hook to this power grid, and then you can control the various things and tweak them that the power lines are connected to. This includes things like turrets. Because you do want to build defenses uh, because your settlements can and will get attacked uh, by raiders. So it's fun to build up something yourself in the game that usually you'll find that, that we have built for you. Um, and there are many large sites in the game world where we allow you to build. And you can even run Brahmin caravans between your settlements. Uh, keep in mind, like most things we do, uh, this is an optional part of the game that you can do if you want to. It's just one part of a huge game, but it's really really great for Fallout. We just absolutely love this feature. And this crafting system carries over to other things in the world. So let's say you want to build this scope. And the game will tell you you need these components. And those components are found in all of the items in the world. So you could decide to build this scope out of these, you know, say the microscope, a toy car, or these, you know, duct tape, an alarm clock and such. So we like to fill our worlds with thousands of items that you can interact with, and now all of them have purpose. And here's what it looks like in the game. We do have over 50 base weapons and over 700 modifications for those weapons. So, you could take a basic, you know, a laser pistol from Fallout, just one of the base weapons, and then modify that and turn it into something completely new.
you can even modify your own power armor. Well, damn! Where the hell do we even begin with this one, eh? So, we've got crafting bases, crafting weapons, you've got a dog, you can go anywhere in the world, you've got dynamic dialogue trees, so you've got basically a moral choice thing, do you go into the house with the robot, like and make some food, or do you shoot him in the face? Just, there is so much in Fallout 4! Like, I thought the hardcore mode from New Vegas was pretty damn good, where you know, you got to eat, sleep, and drink in order to stay alive. And I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. And with this large world, I don't see how it could get any better. And they're just like, ah, actually, that's a piece of shit compared to this. Here's a full world, which is, like, basically the same size as Skyrim, if not bigger, according to what that guy is saying. A Fallout world bigger than Skyrim just kind of blows my mind. Like, Wow. And then it's like, oh, and you also can, you can do anything you like. You can go anywhere you like. And it's like, well, you can do that in Skyrim. Ah, but in Skyrim, can you go to any random location anywhere in the world and build yourself a house? Well, no, I guess you can't. And I think that's an awesome feature because it's like, yeah, after, you know, the nuclear fallout hits, you'll want somewhere to live. And a bombed out building won't be won't be suitable for you and it's nice to actually be able to build your own building and build your own base it makes me feel you know what it feels like where you said like after you've built your own base you start building bars and stuff and people move into your town it reminds me of terraria like i know that's a, a stark comparison comparing a cartoony 2d thing to this giant 3d world but it does remind me of terraria where it's like, oh, well, I've now built myself a house, and now I'm going to build myself another house. Oh, look, a shopkeeper's moved in. Oh, look, a nurse has moved in. Oh, no, the Eye of Cthulhu's watching. I don't know if any um, raider, because he said there's going to get raiders. I don't know if there's, like, an Eye of Cthulhu giant raider boss yet, but it does make me feel like Terraria. It makes me feel like I'm actually striving to achieve a goal in rebuilding the world when I have little people like a nurse and a shopkeeper and a guy that runs the bar moving into my town so I, I appreciate that that is very amazing the weapon thing I mean I, I like upgrading weapons like you know again going to Terraria I like going from the wooden sword to the steel sword to the gold sword to the knight's edge it's always nice to upgrade stuff and find the items in the world, it does make it feel like it's a real world. And these items were things that people left behind. And this is a way to turn that junk that people left behind now that they're dead into something useful like a, a rifle scope. So all of the crafting elements are fantastic. I love them. The graphics look great for obviously being a game that's supposed to feel empty and barren and just nothing but dirt and lifeless plants. Because it is very dirt brown like modern shooters, but it's dirt brown because it's supposed to be because it's nuclear fallout and like how that shiny robot got all rusted and withered when you come back to him 200 years later. So the graphics look fantastic for the setting that they're in. The crafting system is amazing. The fact that there is actually raiders that are going to come and try and take all of your stuff every so often. It may, again, it makes me feel like I'm in Terraria. The goblin army is coming to destroy everything I know and love. The thing about the raiders though is, we had like, raiders in, obviously Terraria with the Goblin Army, or in Assassin's Creed where they try and, or Assassin's Creed Brotherhood where they try and take over your base, but you don't really have to do it, you just have to power level a guy. So it's going to be interesting to see to what degree these AI are programmed. Like, are they just going to kind of come in and steal a bit of gold that you won't care about because you're going to have like $6,000 in the bank anyway? And it's like, oh man, they stole $100. I've only got $6 million left now. So, it, it, Or are they actually going to come in, kill all of your people and blow your houses up so there is a genuine threat rather than being an annoyance? Because like with the Goblin Army in Terraria comes to the point of you kill them once and it's like hey i killed them then they come back then they come back and while they're you know resetting to come back you're getting stronger so by the time you're in the late game you know you could have 
um, the Terror Blade and all of the strongest equipment, and then you're killing all of the Goblin Army in one hit, and you don't want the Goblin Army anymore, but it's random, and it's just like, oh, for God's sake, just go away, you're not a threat, you're just annoying, so it'll be interesting to see, A, if their AI is smart enough to actually be a genuine threat, and B, if they scale compared to where you are, because, as he said, you can upgrade your power armor, you can upgrade your weapons, so I could upgrade my power armor and my weapons to basically be giant ultimate weapons of destruction that shoot out nuclear missiles, and I am an unstoppable badass. Will the AI realize that and be tweaked in order to compensate for my leap in advancement? Or will it still be just like level 1 raiders that are like, We're just going to run in and kill you all! He's got a giant nuke and now he's killed us and you're just annoying raiders. So that's one thing you got to be careful about to see if the raiders do get smarter with how much you are leveling up your weapons and your genuine level and your city and your city's defenses. Then um, the dog, the dog looks interesting. I mean, I, I kind of have this feeling about the dog, like, I hope we don't have to take him with us, because people, there's been an instance like this before in Star Fox Adventures, I mean, this is what I'm comparing it to, where Fox was stuck with Tricky, the little dinosaur, and you could give Tricky commands to go do um, all these things, and it's like, I'm okay with Tricky, I don't hate Tricky, I don't hate the dinosaur, but you've got to keep your eye on the dinosaur, and you've got to know where he is, and you, he's basically, you're basically having to babysit him to a degree, like, you, sometimes you can leave him alone, but you've got to babysit him to a degree, and sometimes I'm just like, dude, I just want to go off by myself over there, and do this thing, you stay there, alright? And he's like, ah, no, but I've got to come with you, because the game says so. And it's like, well, this could be a dangerous situation, Tricky. The, you could die. And, you know, if the dog can bring me stuff from, from, like, a little crack or something, that's fine. Like, I'll walk around with the dog and, say, go in that little crack, get me a spanner. But then, if I know that I'm going into, like, basically an enemy encampment or a giant mutated squirrel den where the dog could die... I'm hoping I can leave the dog alone. It's just like, all right. Shit, I don't have a dog. I don't know dogs' names. All right, Isabel, because that's the only one I know from Animal Crossing. It's like, all right, Isabel, I need you to stay at the house. Stay in your kennel. I'm going to go into the mutant squirrel thing. If you go into the mutant squirrel nest, you will die. So you just stay there. I'll go into the mutant squirrel nest, clear it all out, and if there's some little cracks that only you can get in, I'll come back and get you. So I'm hoping that the dog isn't like completely physically stapled to you, and you can leave the dog at your house and then come back for the dog as you please in order to be able to keep it alive. Because I assume if the dog dies, you ain't going to get another one for quite some time, and then, you know, you might have a dead dog... You might find a crack where only the dog can enter to get you a spanner or a, a rifle piece, and it's like, oh shit, the dog died, and now I can't get that piece, and I've got to wait for another one to respawn. So I'm hoping you can like give command, even if you can't like leave it at home, just give it commands to stay in a safe place till you've done it, and then you come back after the danger has been cleared. So it's less like having to babysit Tricky and more like an actual dog that will understand the danger and just stay away while you fire a giant rocket into the mutant squirrel nest. So I like the idea of a dog. I just hope it's not as bad as Tricky. So the dog could be really, really cool. Um, what else we got to go through? Because there's so much. Um, the character customization, which wasn't in this video, but then again, you can always go watch the full Bethesda stream i guess it's it's now just a regular video because the stream's over but you can go watch the full bethesda stream over at youtube.com forward slash e3 where i think it was GameSpot covered all of the bethesda stream um so yeah the character customization is your standard skyrim customization you slide the sliders you can change between male and female you can pick any skin color you want well within reason human skin colors uh, the world is bigger than Skyrim, we've been over that, the crafting system, there's, there's just so much, isn't there? There's, there's way too much to go over, but 
all in all, I am so excited, and it launches in November. Oh shit! It's it's so close. I want it now, and I'm I'm happy. I'm just over the moon with this thing. If anything out of all the games that I am anticipating in E3, like um, you know, we've seen a few like Doom and Mario Maker and um. Dishonored 2 and I guess Elder Scrolls Online for a bit. But it's like out of all of them, it's like, yeah, I like Doom, I'd like a copy of Doom. Yeah, Mario Maker looks really cool because you can now, like, it's basically Lunar Magic without having to have Lunar Magic crash all the time and all the other stuff, and it's a bit like a better version of the level editor from Little Big Planet. So it's like, yeah, I'd like, I'd like. Mario Maker, I'd like Doom, but oh shit, I really fucking want Fallout, let me have Fallout now, please, I need Fallout, so, um, out of all of the games that have been at E3 so far, this is the one I'm looking forward to the most, I can't, I can't wait to see Fallout 4, I need it now, please give it to me now, I wanna, I wanna make a female, I wanna dress it up as, like, this mutated skunk, I can make it look like my friend Raksha, alright, that's, that's enough of me, saying how how awesome Fallout 4 looks and how very well that guy did the presentation, you know. That guy went into every little detail, making sure to show off every bit of the game. That is how you do a presentation at E3. It's like, this is the game. This is everything you can do in the game. Here's some even minor details about the game, but I want you to see every little detail so that you understand that this is everything that's going to be in the game in order to get you to buy it. That's how you do uh, a, a game presentation. Congratulations, Fallout presenter. You have done an amazing job on the game, and you did a fantastic job showing off everything and presenting it properly. So that is it for Bethesda's stream. That is all the things in Bethesda's stream. I am going to be off to pop out for about four hours or so. So this video will probably go out. I'll schedule it to go up while I'm away. And then when I come back, I will see what other streams we can get into, like Microsoft stream and the PlayStation conference and the Nintendo conference. So I will be back later with more E3 footage. So. If you like what you're seeing so far, and if you're liking all the EFE coverage, feel free to hit that like button, there is more on the way, and feel free to subscribe so you don't miss out on a single video, because as I say, there is more E3 presentations on the way. See you in a bit.